photographer TJ6-3.7. Let's begin. Ready? Yes, sir. Recite your baseline. A system of frames of the yellow mirrorless began to spin. A system of frames interlinked within frames interlinked within frames interlinked within one stem. Frames dreadfully distinct against the dark. Frames. Frames. Does your camera make frames? Frames. Frames. Do you use natural frames? Frames. Frames. Interlinked. Interlinked. Are technology and creative interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Japan and photography are interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Why don't you say that three times? Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. We're done. You can pick up your mirrorless. Hello and welcome back to the show about the show before the show where we talk about Around the World with Taylor Jackson presented by Nikon. Today we have a very special uh, edition of the episode. We have two guests coming on the show. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome Taylor Jackson. Taylor Jackson, everybody. Hey, good to see you, man. Take a seat. Good to see you. It's good to be back oh, here. It's good to have you back, it's been man. A long time. How you long been? Long time. Long time. I'm, I've been good, man. How about Great. you? Great. Get up to a lot, of, a lot of stuff. I went to the bathroom and I changed my jacket. Wow. And wow. my shirt. Wow. Eventful ten minutes. Talking about traveling, <laughs> Japan. I can't think of a further place from Ontario. Probably Australia. Probably Australia. Yeah. But Japan's pretty close. You go. You go over the North Pole to get there. That's right. Is a surprise that you look at your window and you're like, whoa, we're in Siberia. Incredible. That's, that's the world, man. Faster to get there over the top of the earth than around the... Cheaper, too, probably. Yeah. Colder. Colder. Less fuel cost. Yeah. You don't have to go through the core. That's good content. Everything good. Everything's, everything is good about that. Everything is good about it. Taylor Jackson, this episode of Around the World, world with Taylor Jackson, presented by Nikon, we focused on Japan and why you should spend your money and your time and go. Yeah. I'd like to welcome our second guest, Marshall Angus, to the show, everybody. Marshall Angus, producer of Round the Hotel Jackson, Better My Night Gone. Come on in, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Take a seat. No, Marshall Angus, you've been to Japan almost as many times as Taylor Jackson. Tell me about your experiences there. Um, yeah, we were going for like a couple times a year uh, for a while. We Marshall eats 100 Coolishes every time that he goes. That was the next note of my, of my notes here. Uh, tell me about Coolish. What is it and how is it enjoyed? Coolish is a soft serve ice cream that is served in a pouch that you squeeze similar to a Capri Sun. Okay. It served is, cold? Well, yeah, it's ice cream. Okay. And how do you enjoy it? What's your preferred method of enjoying this treat? Well, you generally go to 7-Eleven, Lawson Station, or um, Family Mart. These are stores? Yes. And uh, they're in a freezer section. You open the little freezer, you pick your flavor. Vanilla is classic. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you find a chocolate one. That's nice. I like that. And then you pay for it walk out of the store and you twist the little cap off and you have to actually warm it up. That's, I've missed that step. You have to warm it up in like your armpit a little bit because it's frozen solid. Right. It's like a brick of ice cream. It's a brick of ice cream. Yeah. So then you take the cap off and you squeeze it out and uh, yeah, we eat a lot of it. Like it's a, it's an unsettling amount of ice cream every time we go. It becomes a problem. It is a problem. So when we arrived uh, in Japan this past trip for this episode of Around the World with Taylor Jackson presented by Nikon, where we traveled to Japan, uh, in Tokyo specifically, what did we do when we arrived? What was the first thing we did when we got off the airplane? I think we Maybe just... Maybe the first thing. I Maybe got like the eighth thing we did. Yeah, I went to Sonoma and got Coolish. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty quick. I would say that we put all our stuff in the hotel, Marshall got a Coolish, yep. and then I think we went and played darts until like four in the morning for some reason. The jet lag just destroys you. Yeah. So you're up ridiculous hours, right? Yeah. Yeah, or like when we decided there's a, a bar that's kind of near where our hotel was. It's open until 7 or 8 in the morning. Something and ridiculous. we went to sleep, and then this is another night. And then we woke up in the morning, and we were like, we should go get some garlic bread. And it was it's like 4 a.m., yeah. and we're like, hey, yeah. are you up? Yeah, I'm yeah. up. Let's go get let's garlic go get bread, some garlic and, bread. And, beers. Yeah. and then we played ping pong, and yep. we did the golf simulator. That's right. We did the, uh, the trilogy, or what do we call it? The something of sports? The trio of sports. The trio the, of sports. The wide, trio, wide world of trio of sports. Yeah. Who yeah. won that in the end? Did I win? I think you won. Find out for yourselves, folks. Wait, stick around to the end of the show to watch the show after the show. But that's speaking about food. It's not in it. Tell it's me about your work. favorite dish you can get at a, a 7-Eleven, Taylor. Or a Lawson's or Ooh. a... I like the 7-Eleven waffles. Okay. Oh, but you can get hot dogs. I know you guys really like hot dogs. Have you ever had the hot dogs? No, I haven't. No. They're floating in uh, briny water with other... Yeah, yeah with like tentacle beasts shellfish and Sometimes they're not squid. called hot dogs. Okay. They're called plip pops. <laughs> huh. I have a photo. I'll, I'll dig it up because it blows my mind every time I see it, and I don't know what it translates to. What? I like the egg sandwiches. 
Ooh, those Just are fascinating. Good. Taylor doesn't enjoy eggs outside of, I think, this Marshall hates experience. egg salad. I, I hated and it. He okay. loves the egg sandwich. Yeah, and he, he convinced me to try it, and I was like, wow, I've been missing it for years, and he always gets it. And then I finally ate one, and I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Let's, let's go back, get more. Yeah, and the red chicken from uh, Lawson Station. Ooh, yeah, too. little popcorn chickens. Yeah. Right, the hot um, chicken. The red chicken specifically is, yep. is the best. So you get flip -top red chicken, and you get an egg sandwich, and then you're sitting at like $4. Canadian total for the most delicious meal you'll ever have in Japan. Maybe if there's room oh, in your hey, belly, you cool could. Uh, the screen. There's oh, there's chicken. There. Look, at Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that's a yeah, complete that's meal. That's timing. Oh, Red chicken. So Comes with a little like uh, stabby thing. Oh yeah, yeah it does. A little, a little toothpick to eat it out of. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, just eating some Really chicken. enjoyed that. Finish yeah. it off with some dessert, some, some delicious. Oh, there's these salad cool. This is Marshall about to experience his first uh, egg sandwich oh. ever, actually. Life changing. Incredible. You could call it. This is baked in B-roll. We do anything. We just sit here and watch this it with you guys. Yeah, what, this you guys should narrate what's happening now. <laughs> That's Taylor eating it, and like there he is. He's like, you should try it. And the camera does like the, the the no shake. He's like, no, I don't want that with the camera. Right. And then he tries the other the other piece, and he loves it. Can't get enough. Yeah. And then he's kind of embarrassed about it too. Look at you can see the embarrassment that he's like, oh. oh. Oh that man, good. that's good. At this moment. <laughs> yeah, that, that smile there. And he's like, <laughs> that's a knowing <laughs> smile of like. I've added this to my things of things I cannot eat any oh, or yeah. cannot not eat. I have to eat these all the time now. Yeah. So that's a real life genuine moment. Oh. This is Marshall at his house. Anyways. Talking about it. Talking wow. about so, Excel sandwiches. Speaking of great food, which I think we've kind of unpacked for the most part. Those are the only dishes we can really discuss about Japan. Baseball. Baseball is big in Japan. Marshall, tell me about baseball. Yeah, the baseball culture there is insane. Like we uh we've been a couple times to see Tokyo Giants play. Okay. Which are like the, the number one team, but there's like six teams in Tokyo by themselves. They're all like pro level baseball, like major league baseball level. Uh, just the energy in the stadiums are insane. There's like, there's a brass band playing in the outfield. There's guys with these like 20 foot flags, like waving in the air. Uh, the beers are in- The beers in backpacks. Like uh, they, come up the, they come up the aisles and they like shoot out with a gun. Yeah. Like they're running. There's one like that's crazy. like a whiskey sour, and I there's like one the different sour. beer, so you have to find the, the right person. And they had like the logo on the backpack, so it's like, I want that one. And then they come up and give it to you. It's crazy. That's and sweet. you can get like great food again. So we were getting like donburi bowls with like chicken cutlet on rice. People are coming right from work in their full suits yeah. with their bento box. It's, it's, it's a nice thing. Yeah. It's a nice thing. If you had season tickets, it'd be amazing. Like I'd, I'd love to just go on your way home from work or something. When we did the speed train to Kyoto, yeah. I had one of the best meals of my life on that. Uh, train station platform. It was just a bento box of like, uh, they kept it warm somehow. It was chicken with a bit of rice. It was like one of the best meals I've had did the entire trip. Did you get it out of a vending machine or was no. it out of like I went a to booth. a booth. Okay. Yeah, a kiosk booth thing on the platform. Like this will be enough to tie me over for the two hour train ride. I remember you being really happy about that. It was so tasty. <laughs> and I saw a TikTok, this is dating it a bit. I saw a TikTok this morning about the exact same thing. Best, some of the best food you can get at a train station. Yeah in the whole country. And they have like little acai beers that are like special edition Shikenzen beers. Yeah. You get those, they're like this big. I like those. Tell me about the, the cherry blossom season, Taylor. What's that about? What's, what are we looking at it's here? It's on the screen right hey, now, Taylor. Yeah. That's it's what the, it's the time to go. It's the time to go. Okay. Uh, it's a really cool, if you can go, obviously parks are going to be pretty busy. You will wait in lines to go see trees at nighttime, for instance, that like they only allow a certain number of people in the park and you have to wait in line outside of the park and you kind of like, you can't stop, you kind of just keep going, which is hard for photography. Truly. Um, in the daytime, if you're kind of out in normal spaces, you're usually, there's, there's photo opportunities kind of everywhere. And it's really cool because everyone just, it's kind of like picnic season that everybody takes off work and they go and they have picnics with their family in the park and um, everybody just gets like their, their tarps and they just kind of find their spot and that's the family tarp for the day or, um, and it, it's, I don't know, it's really cool. It's really, it's, it's a thing that I've heard about. It's like, oh yeah, like I'd love to go see that. And then you actually go see it, you're like, that's just a much better experience than I expected it being. I expected to see cherry blossoms and, and beautiful trees, but I didn't expect to see an entire kind of like celebration for it. The whole cool. community gets around these oh, trees yeah. Yeah. and they just kind of... They, they're very protective of it too. Like I've seen, like even in the one park that's in the middle of Tokyo, there's like a little rope that like you can't go past that line to go oh. to the grass to go up to certain trees. Right. Like some of them are very old and they're protecting them. And um, I saw a tourist step over the chain with a camera, with a cell phone camera, and like two photographers who were set up with tripods on the chain line, like the guy yelled at him. It's like you, and like went over, it's like, no, 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 like you come back, like that is completely unacceptable. Like don't yeah. do that, yeah. be, be polite. This entire thing is set up to be polite and you're ruining it. For everyone. <laughs> it's funny. So tell me about the introduction clip. So 
for, for viewers, longtime viewers of the show, Taylor Jackson likes to go to a new place and kind of build a, a preview or a trailer based on TV shows, popular movies he's really enjoyed in the past, and we build and we create this kind of intro sequence. What's going on here, Taylor? What are we talking about? What are we showing? I think I was on my way home. Maybe it might have been from our Iceland trip. And I watched Blade Runner 2049 on the plane, and there's the, the one scene where they're getting like his baseline test, um, like psychological evaluation. And I thought that it was like a very interesting, like, wow, that's just like an insane scene. So I just went home and I just did the voiceover for it, but just made it about photography. And then Marshall and I left maybe two days afterwards, and we were just like, yeah, let's bring some like blue lights and stuff and just make it look all, all crazy and like we're in the future. Cyberpunk. We were in the future. It worked out well. Yeah, it's probably my favorite. I would say it's one of my more favorite intros. Yeah, same here. I don't want to. I don't want to step on the the Santorini. Step all over it, baby. No, the Santorini one's beautiful too, Tim. No, I, I think I that one's close to your heart. This one definitely is more cinematic for this episode. Yeah, it feels like it's very fast. High quality. The cuts are all real yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. And even like the panning and stuff when we're walking down the street, like that was fun to shoot too. Yeah, yeah. Because you can you can see it in the camera as you're doing it. That's cool. What about the go karts? Tell me about go karts. Mario These are cards. closed now, aren't they? Yeah, you can't this do is them a, anymore. This is done. So this is a this, this is, is a over. experience that you can no longer experience. But tell me about your experience hey, with this experience. <laughs> the so what happened for us was that we went with our friend Michael, and Michael had his international um, driver's license. Marshall and I had ours from a trip to Italy like two years before but apparently they expire after mm. a year. And your international like, driver's license is literally a piece of paper where they just, they write, write on it. it. And then they're like, here you go. And apparently it expires in here. Like I, we could have changed it to a different number with a pen. Yeah. If but we had noticed. If there's a problem, then it's a, a real problem. It's a Because you're on streets, like you're street legal go-karts. Yeah, so like what's it's, happening? What, you're in go-karts on the, on the roads? It, it's nuts. It should it not, I guess it's no longer happening, but oh, like it should have not have so been allowed. Accidents. Like okay. you're at go-kart height and you're like beside trucks that like the, <laughs> the tire is what like that. So Squish. you're like just, and you're dressed up as like Mario or Yoshi and you're just like driving around. Marshall and I got to go in the tuk-tuk. That was fun. Yeah. The guy like he called one of his other guys in, and they're like, you're going no matter what. So they, we waited for a guy and he showed up in a tuk-tuk. Only tuk-tuk in Japan. The only tuk-tuk in Japan wow. apparently. And he was really proud of it. And he played like an Avril Lavigne mix for us, which Perfect. I really enjoyed. You're from Canada. He's like, I must love Canadians. Avril. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, yeah, no, this is good. <laughs> and but it was really cool because we were able to like hang out of the side of the tuk tuk yeah. and get like really cool shots down low and stuff. I think I was, enjoyed that more than I did. actually I really driving. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I would I, I would choose that experience over driving. Less terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And then we hooked Michael up with uh, I think he had like a wrist GoPro. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, and we threw it. a task cam on him so we could hear his like. It's mostly him going, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like accelerating to try to get into traffic in a go-kart on wet roads yeah. and like actually like it, it's like Mario Kart the game he's half like, in the bike lane half in a uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah like it's like, nuts yeah, this is him. Hey, there he is ah. screaming terrifying yeah. <laughs> so having a great time but also just absolutely terrifying would you go to Japan again yeah I'm hoping to go like next week if we could but yeah we can't right now no yeah Not allowed. as soon as they open their doors Marshall will be there yeah and they'll notice a coolish spike they'll be like we didn't really sell many coolish yeah. and then all of a sudden like what happened and... here? What happened here? Yeah. That's all the time we have for the show, about the show, before the show. Oh, we should talk about the cars. Want we'll to talk about cars? The cars are just ridiculous. There's so much in this episode. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm looking at this, it's non it's, it's a compilation of like 10 trips. Like this that field, this isn't, field isn't, yeah, this yeah. is closed. But we have some great photos of it. It's amazing on yeah. the, in the crossing there. Like, there's so much to do. There's no reason not to in go. In the Nikon Museum. Oh yeah, that's also very nice. I would love to go to that. That looks like a blast. That was cool. Every camera. Every camera and lens they've ever made, they have a copy of it in the museum. Incredible. Like even Look at that guy. even the funny like the point and shoot and stuff. Yeah. Special editions. All the bodies. Taylor Jackson, Marshall Angus, thank you so much for joining us for the deconstruction of Around the World with Taylor Jackson presented by Netcon. I'm Jimmy Musa. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Photographer TJ6-3.7. Let's begin. Ready? Yes, sir. Recite your baseline. A system of frames of the yellow mirrorless began to spin. A system of frames interlink within frames interlink within frames interlink within one stem. Frames dreadfully distinct against the dark. Frames. frames. Does your camera make frames? Frames. Frames. Do you use natural frames? Frames. Frames. Interlinked. Interlinked. Are technology and creative interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Japan and photography are interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Within frames interlinked? Within frames interlinked. Why don't you say that three times? Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. Within frames interlinked. We're done. You can pick up your mirrorless. Thank you.
Tokyo is my favorite city in the world. For a long time, my favorite city was Queenstown, New Zealand. But as of this date, as of this moment right now, I'm calling it Tokyo, Japan. I love a lot of things about Tokyo, and I'm going to do my best to summarize them all here. But first, this isn't really what Tokyo sounds like. It sounds a little bit more like this. I wanted to do interviews with everyone that helped make this show happen as part of the final episode, but because we can't leave our homes, I had everyone record it on their phone. The thing that I absolutely love about Japan is the fact that everyone gives you your space there. Everyone you walk by on the street or you interact with on a train is very respectful and very aware of your social bubble and gives you that space that you need. Even though it's such a dense population in such a small area, I've never felt crowded or claustrophobic. I always felt like I was able to breathe. The thing I love most about Japan is probably driving go karts around Shinjuku dressed like Yoshi. Actually, no, it's going to restaurants and catching fish and then eating that fish raw as sushi. No, no, it's actually probably going. 300 kilometers an hour on a train from Tokyo to Kyoto. But then I think about the people and the culture and everybody seems so respectful. But at the same time, it creates this crazy Basozuku car, car culture. Maybe it's just the fact that Japan is a completely other place in the world and it feels so unique and so wonderful. And doing business there is so respectful and so calm and so different from everything I've ever experienced in North America. I love Japan. We're here at the Nikon Museum in Tokyo, and this is a museum that I wish I would have come to a long, long time ago. They have every single Nikon camera and every single Nikon lens here. They even have some very obscure and interesting lenses that I did not know existed or that I haven't seen in real life ever. Definitely worth the trip. Even if you're not an icon shooter, I would say to come to this museum. It's really, really cool. Photographically, Japan is really an incredible country. Well, we don't have time to show you absolutely everywhere in this country, I am going to take you south to Nagasaki for a moment. Off the coast, there is an abandoned island nicknamed Battleship Island because, well, it looks like a battleship. For a long time, this island was a coal mine, but as petroleum replaced coal in Japan in the 1960s, there was no longer a need for it. Everyone left in 1974, but photographically, this island is now a place like no other. When you think of Japanese cuisine, you might think of sushi or whiskey or many other things. You might not think of convenience store food, but the convenience store culture here is real and there is a lot of delicious food inside this Lawson station. There's actually a convenience store that started in Ohio and then got sold to Japan somehow and there's a lot of them here. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna get some delicious red chicken and we're gonna get some Coolish, which is a Capri Sun style milkshake, soft serve in a bag and an egg sandwich. Here it is. Coolish is Marshall's favorite thing in the world. Uh, we buy him about 100 of them every time we come here. And he eats them and they give him his camera powers. Uh, over here, we're gonna find, there's no full egg sandwich. We made a mistake and we came here at lunch. So the egg sandwich that you want is this half, but I don't really want a tuna sandwich because I'm allergic to tuna, sadly. I just want two of these. Might have to go to another Lawson's. Two red chicken. There you go, $6, lunch for two people and dessert from Marshall. Let's go have our lunch. The rest of the world has a lot to learn about convenience stores. 
It's been quite some time, but we finally located a Lawson's egg sandwich. And as you can see, they've cut the crusts off. Just a nice touch. Looks pretty simple. It's just perfect. It's a perfect sandwich. You want half of this? No, I hate them. You hate these? I hate them. How do you hate these? Oh, it's awful. Have you had them? I just, egg salad uh, No, egg have one, have one. No, seriously. I'm filming you, your reaction to it. Right? It's really good. You hate egg salad sandwiches and you love the Lawson's egg sandwich. What is that about? There isn't even mayo in it. You're a believer now. Top three things I really enjoy about Japan. Uh, number one would probably be the easy accessibility of snacks, drinks, and ice cream at 7-Eleven, Lawson Station, and Family Mart. Really appreciate those guys. Um, number two would be precision kitchen equipment. Japanese kitchen knives are a big deal. We, uh, we really enjoy those. We go down to Kapabashi in Tokyo, which is uh, also known as Kitchen Town. And we pick those up there every time we go, we bring them back for other people that can't get there and want to have that experience. So I, I go into different stores and pick them up. And uh, number three would be Skylines. The, uh, the building variety, but also the uh, Nissan variety. There's so much to love about Japan, but hands down, what I love the most are the cat cafes. Just how passionate everybody is while they're in them, about them, talking about the cats, hanging around the cats. It's it's amazing and it's it's kind of a dream come true. <laughs> Cherry blossom season in Tokyo is usually the last week of March, first week of April, and plus or minus a couple of days every year. And if you're fortunate enough to make that fit your calendar, you're going to come home with some incredible photos. But there are great photographic opportunities all year long, even if there are no cherry blossoms. Let's take some photos at nighttime. We're out here in Shinjuku. It is blue hour. Actually, it is almost blue hour. According to Alpen Glow, the app, blue hour begins at 5.04 p.m. until 5.15 p.m. So what's going to happen is we have 11 minutes of blue hour. I'm going to try to get as many great shots as I possibly can. One of them is behind me, and then one of them is going to be a tripod shot of traffic with the trains and everything. Hopefully it works out with timing and everything, but we'll, uh, we'll find out. Let's go. So I can actually kind of shoot this from right here. This looks pretty fantastic already. Um, the amazing thing with this 24 to 72.8 is the way that it holds kind of highlights together like that. It actually does a really good job making it look as natural as possible and not giving you any crazy lens flares or anything that you just don't really want in your frame. I think we got that photo as good as it's going to get. Uh, I'm going to head over here and I'm going to steal my tripod from Tim's backpack. So this billboard up here is my favorite billboard in all of Japan. I don't know why, I just love dogs. It's pushing a shopping cart. It's awesome. I'm going to steal this. Favorite billboard, prominent. Going to go down to, what do we want to do? Eight second exposure. I'm happy with that. And that's all for season one. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much to Nikon for sending us out there in the world with their cameras and not really telling us what to do and, and being cool with it. If we decided that we want to do a cooking show <laughs> rather than a photography show, it really was a dream job. And we're so grateful that we got to do this with our lives. So thank you for joining us. And hopefully this has inspired you to see a few more places with your camera, hopefully a Nikon camera and, uh, just keep taking photos of what's fun for you and populating your portfolio 
with what you want to be paid to create someday. And if you're creating that portfolio already, those companies and couples and people are going to come along that are going to hire you to create your, your dream job again. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this season and drop a comment if you if you enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll be back for season two and the world returns to normal. It's a bit it's a bit of a strange place right now. Thank you.